fellas, we are finally back in the motherland, and while the horizon does look a little bit blight at the moment, we are gonna reheat an old classic of the channel to tackle the upcoming league. This is a bleeding spectral shield through gladiator as my 3.15 expedition league starter. Now let's get the uglies out of the way first. Yes, support gems are getting hit really freaking hard. The damage bonuses from all support gems are getting reduced, while at the same time the mana cost multipliers have been increased. As such, we'll have a quote unquote harder time fine tuning characters in this upcoming league, especially when it comes to sustaining mana costs. Fortunately, somebody at GGG realized that a certain skill involving shields was too awkward to use for its own good and decided to buff it to the moon. That's right, Spectral Shield Throw is gaining a rather substantial base damage boost, and as the cherry on top, it's gonna inherit the quality of life upgrades from its threshold you will divide and conquer. Thanks to these changes, the support gem nerfs don't hurt as much, and we should have a smooth ride. That is, as long as we build this character correctly. Having said that, remember that this is a shield focused build, and as such the number one priority is gonna be acquiring a relatively thick shield. In order to have a fun time with this, we definitely want a shield with 2400 armor or more. And while that isn't particularly easy as a starter, it is a goal that we must reach. Especially if you intend on tackling some endgame content, such as the first Serious Awakener levels, Elder or Shaper, or maybe even some random stuff here and there. There are other things that we must iron out, like some influenced gear here and there, alongside maybe a unique or two, but we'll talk about those in a bit. Lastly, a Spectral Shield Throw is also becoming a level 28 gem. Up to this point, it was a reward slash vendor gem from Nessa on Act 1, unlocked once you entered Mervale's Caverns. This means that we are without our main skill until level 28. Fortunately, we are getting a new shield skill, Shield Crush, which is a melee skill that, like Spectral Shield Throw or Shield Charge, scales its damage from your shield stats. And the funny thing is that we can actually use that gem in this build without having to change anything whatsoever. So hey, if you don't want to use a Spectral Shield Throw at all, feel free to use Shield Crush from level 1 all the way to the endgame. Just be warned that certain gems are gonna have to be swapped in order to accommodate that skill, but it shouldn't be that bad. And with all of that said, hey, if you are new around here and you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, otherwise a rating and a comment are always appreciated. And now, let us talk about one of my favorite builds of all time, going strong for yet another league. Ok everyone, you all know the drill, let's discuss the gear first. Remember to get as much Chaos Resistance, Life and Attributes anywhere and everywhere you can cram them into, even if I don't mention it in the guide itself. Alright, let's go. The first thing is the shield. We are gonna need a thick board to deal the good bleed damage. This one is kinda spicy, especially for a starter, but as I said in the intro, anything with 2400 armor or more is perfectly fine. Though if we are being honest, the higher you go, the smoother this becomes. For the weapon, we are using a stat stick. This means that the weapon's only job is providing damage bonuses to bleed. So what I recommend is a one-handed weapon with increased physical damage over time from Warlord Influence, alongside damage with bleeding, physical damage over time multiplier or damage over time multiplier. The more bleed focused modifiers that you can cram into it, the better this build will do. Moving on to the helmet, you've got two choices. Either you get nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage which is an elder modifier, or a spectral shield throw damage as the enchantment, though if you can combine both, that will be amazing. For the body armor, we need a 6 link body with as much life and resistances, and that should suffice. However, the deeper we go into the end game, we'll have a challenge to overcome, as I like building my characters with elemental element immunity, and I want to cram any source of it anywhere on the gear. And in this case, the body armor is one place where this mod can be crafted on. But I also want this body armor to be redeemer influenced for the chance to gain frenzies on hit. Acquiring something similar to my body armor is one of the goals I want you to keep in mind. You don't particularly need something like this right away, but later on if you've got currency to spare try to get something like this body armor. The same idea can be followed on the gloves. We can start off with just life, resists and physical damage over time multiplier from either hunter or elder influence. However, as a long term goal, we also want damage with bleeding on them, which happens to be an elder modifier. So, if you can, try to double dip on bleed modifiers in the gloves. The boots need life, resistances and movement speed, but if you can, try to get the hunter modifier bleeding you inflict deals damage faster. However, as of 3.15, boots can be crafted with elemental element avoidance chance, 
so if you need another source of that modifier, cram it in there. The amulet is next and you've got some options. On one hand, physical damage or time multiplier from either Hunter or Elder Influence is really good. Or you can go the other route of spamming essences of delirium on a fractured amulet until you get resistances or physical damage to attacks. For the Anoint, cleaving is the best choice. However, with some further tinkering on the skill tree you can use something else, but we'll discuss that later. Moving on, one of the rings has a vulnerability on hit, either as the implicit or as a suffix. Alongside life, resists and if possible, intelligence. The other ring needs life, resistances, intelligence and either fist damage to attacks, damage with bleeding which is a warlord modifier, or increased damage which is a veiled modifier from Leo Jewelry. The belt is a darkness and throne, because this little belt is really freaking good for builds like this one. The only thing that beats it is an Elder Influence Stygian Bias with global fist damage on it, which is kinda difficult to get nowadays, but if possible try to get one with the enchantment, enemies maimed by you take 8% increased damage over time, and the jewels in the belt have life, resistances and damage over time while holding a shield. However, be aware that you can also get ailment immunity chance on abyssal jewels, which can help you cap those avoidances faster. As for flasks, they are getting nerfed too, which is why I advise building for ailment immunity altogether. But the gatorade flavors are Aromis Concoction, a Sulfur and a Basalt Flask. However, the more I think about it, a mana flask may be required on this build, and any build for that matter, despite the reduced mana cost crafts on the jewelry, so that can replace the Basalt Flask. And that should be it for the gear. It is a bit spicy for a starter, a bit too optimistic if you wanna call it that. But with the state of the game going forward, we definitely want to invest time and effort acquiring gear like this if not better. But with all of that said, let's talk about the skill tree. Alright everyone, we are aiming to hit level 95 with this character. Though the last 4 levels are the frenzy charges and those are only necessary if you get a body armor that generates frenzies on hit. But anyways, for bandits we side with no one. And for Pantheons, either Solaris or Lunaris as the major ones, and for the lesser ones, either Yugul, Shakari or Averath. For the Ascendancy, it is the classic left and right approach to the Gladiator nodes. You go right side first for the bleed stuff and you go left side next for the block chance benefits. As simple as that. Now before I begin with the passives, this character is not using cluster jewels. And it's not that I don't want to, but because the gear is already pretty challenging to get to add the stress of acquiring cluster jewels especially as a league starter. You can cram some cluster jewels into this build, and by the time I wrap this one up that might be a reality, but be warned that the notables that we would use were nerfed, rather substantially, which also pushes them outside our priority list. Alright, so for the tree itself, we are gonna begin from the right side of the duelist area and we are gonna rush towards Crimson Dance and Bloodletting by going through the shield nodes first. Next we want Dirty Techniques and then we are gonna rush towards the Ranger start. We want to take the entire Crystal Skin wheel for some elemental resistances but also elemental avoidance chance. This wheel right here provides 50% chance to avoid Ignite, Chill, Freeze and Shock, which is too good to pass up. We also grab some shield stuff, life and also the thick skin life wheel, for another 20% chance to avoid elemental elements. From there we also take some shield stuff near dirty techniques, then we are rushing towards resolute technique and that way we don't have to worry about accuracy at all. Once we've got resolute technique we can grab the life that we ignored on the way, aggressive bastion for some damage on block chance, vanquisher from the left side for some physical damage over time multiplier goodies, tireless for some life and reduced cost of skills and we also want some wavering stance. And while yes, we are gonna lose the evasion rating, we hardly had any of it to begin with. So it's not like we lost a lot by specking into unwavering stance. Anyways, we also could have Relentless, Veteran Soldier and Constitution. And as I said previously, if you have the body armor with Frenzies on hit, you can grab the Frenzy notes. Otherwise, feel free to grab more life until you can get those. Now for the jewel sockets, we use 5 jewels in this build. And while I am using Divide and Conquer in this build guide, in practice the jewel is not needed anymore. This translates into us being able to use another rare jewel or heck even a watcher side. My jewels have increased the maximum life and either fist damage over time multiplier, damage with bleeding, damage over time, global fist damage, or increased damage. But that should be it for the standard skill tree. However, if you want to use cluster jewels, I have an additional POV in the description below. But that also implies using a thread of hope and switching some passives around. That version deals more damage, but should be harder to achieve. Up to you though. Anyways, let's discuss the gem setups now. 
Ok, so funnily enough, my current DM setup is actually wrong. Currently, I've got a Spectral Shield throw linked to Unbound Ailments, Vicious Projectiles, Chance to Bleed, Swift Affliction and Brutality. For all intents and purposes, my current setup is not taking into consideration the gym nerfs. However, the POV in the description has the updated values. That is, if you are using the latest POV community fork. Funnily enough, I didn't actually lose that much damage and it's thanks to the buff to Spectral Shield throw. So yes, while you might say that this setup is wrong because I didn't account for the gem nerfs, in practice this is gonna behave just like it did before the nerf. And it's mostly due to that buff to our main skill. The correct gem setup, however, uses deadly elements instead of unbound elements. Anyways, in the gloves I've got Tempest Shield and Ancestral Protector, which is linked to MAME support. In the weapon, Flame Dash and Blood Rage. And in the helmet, Pride, Herald of Purity and War Banner. Though, try to link the auras to Enlighten, to have a bit more mana considering the mana cost increases that are coming with this new league. Finally, try to accommodate a Corrupting Fever setup in a 4 link. I forgot to add this one when I was recording my game play but once the league begins I will try to use that skill as well, just to squeeze a bit more damage against enemies. But yeah that is it for the gem setups, so let us grab this one with some final thoughts. Alright, so with all honesty I know that this build is far from original, especially in this channel. Heck, the channel banner has my first spectral shield throw character posing in it. It is one of my favorites if not my favorite build of all time. So reheating it for this upcoming league seemed like the best choice that I could make. And as we've seen in the past, it has room for continuous upgrades, both in the defense and damage departments, especially if you get a thicker shield like the ones I've got in a standard. A better stat stick, better jewels, better jewelry will go a long way helping this character feel better. The build is also pretty chill, in the sense that clearing rooms of monsters takes little effort thanks to the chains from the skill. Enemies pop if they die thanks to blitz, and once you've got the elemental element avoidance covered, it will feel even better. So much so that I'm confident you'll have a hard time parting from it. However, the next league is gonna be interesting. Difficulty is being ramped up, things are gonna get spicier, and I expect a lot of apathy to surround the general opinion of this game. Depending on how much interaction I see on my videos, we might have to cut this league's content short. Especially if Battlefield 2042's beta drops anytime soon. Heck, I might even become a Dijon and play New World, the Jeff Bezos funded MMO. I don't know, I can't judge the upcoming changes without having a first hand experience. So instead of making uneducated guesses, I hope that everyone has fun playing Expedition. And if you go to this point in the video, hopefully you achieve your goals with relative ease in the new league. And with that note, if you got to this point, consider subscribing to the channel, otherwise a rating and a comment are always appreciated. Take care, have a nice league start and may RNG Jesus bless you this weekend. Peace out.